Welcome back to the Davy Brown 990 Restoration Channel. For those of you new, my name's Barry. Right, today, what we're going to do today, we're going to have a go at setting the preload on the differential cage in the casting. Let's have a quick look at this casting. What we're going to do, we're going to get the diff out in a minute. We're going to pop the diff in there and set the preload on it. Now, the method we're going to explore today I know we haven't completed the gearbox yet, but the method we're going to explore today is a method that was given to us by Lance from Bundy Bear Shed. Um, he emailed us the other day to give us the, the story of how he was shown to set up the preload on these diffs when he was a field operative back in the 80s. And bearing in mind, this was back in the 80s, okay, when not everybody had expensive DTIs. I've got access to a DTI today, but back in the 80s, Lance didn't. And this is how his boss showed him or trained him how to set up the preload and prepare it pre-installation for the gearbox. So, let us get ourselves sorted out, get some gear together, get the diff out, and we'll get this to work, eh? Back in a minute. Right, so we've got here, we've got the, the keep screws that put the lateral pressure onto the bearings. We've got the caps and we've got our keeps. And these are all sided. Remember, we punched them. This side's two, that side's one. The caps have to go onto their respective sides. You cannot mix them up, you cannot change them because the threads just simply don't line up. So the plan is here, Put the diff in, wind these in to a position where the diff crown wheel will just rotate with a screwdriver stuck through the hole. I haven't got a screwdriver, so I'm going to pin it where I'm going to use a big pinch bar. Um, and you lock it up here and you wire the you wire this adjustment nut to the frame. You can then disassemble all of this and the preload will remain until it's time to put your gearbox together. So let's crack on, see if it works, eh? Right, we're going to lift the diff into position, put the two bearing keepers in place. Now Lance did say that in, in this situation, this does not matter where it is in relation to the crown wheel to set the preload at this point. We'll just pop them. Ah, wait a minute, that one you cannot. This side you can because there's no shaft sticking out. This one, take that off. Pop that in there. Pop that on. Now, put my nuts on. I'm not going to tighten these, I'm just simply going to squeeze down. Just do these hand tight. Right. And bearing in mind that all of this is dry. There is no oil in here at the minute. There will be when I come to put this together properly. Now, what Lance was saying was, you get your big screwdriver, or in my case a bar, and we'll slot that into there. Now, see that when it falls? Lance says to do up. Do up your retaining nuts. Do 
to the point where when you put that in there, that's still rotating too freely. And it doesn't matter which one you wind in. This would be easier with oil on because these, the large bolt, the large nuts, would go in easier. I might actually make a spanner for this. As I say, bearing in mind that this method was what Lance was taught when field operatives really didn't have access to a lot of equipment that we have open access to today. Having said that, I would think that still a lot of us at home don't have access to DTIs, do we? Aha, right, wait a minute, that's getting... I can't be self-lucky that I've got a DTI. And I only bought it for to do the valve chest with. This one might be big enough. That is definitely slowing down, isn't it? That <clears throat> may be too tight. Give that a roll. Make sure them bearings are uh, aligning themselves. Yes, that's too tight now. Okay, so. That's, that's just 
just starting to move there. Okay, now put my, my locking tabs in. That will just knock that around so we can get a tab on here. And we'll put my locking tab in here. Again, we'll just do those a finger tight. One more, give it a whiz. I'm happy with that. And I think, I think I followed Lance's instructions correctly. Now, what we can do now, take this to bits. Diddles. And we can lift off this side complete. And what we do, we get a bit of wire. And we'll wire that ring in there. Like that. And that is then set. Okay. Let's get the other side off now. Do the same with this one. Keep that in place. A couple of bits of wire. Keep it all in position. Okay. Now then, to set your backlash. Once your pinion and everything's in, pop it all back together. If you then loosen that and you move this one out two teeth and you move this one in two teeth, the relationship between the two is going to remain the same. And therefore your preload on the bearings will remain the same. <coughs> so you just have to remember to always move each side the same amount before putting your locking tabs back on. Right, so as I say, that was some information given to me by Lance um, as to how he was trained in the field to set the um, preload on the diff cage out in the field. It comes across as pretty rudimentary and rough. But the thing is, not everyone, even today, not everyone has access to a DTI in order to set your two thou float on that cage. And depending upon which handbook you read, that differs, doesn't it? I think the books that I've got says between two and seven. 
and the backlash is between seven and nine thou. Um, so if you haven't got access to a DTI, that's a nice little rough method. You're not going to blow the bearings to bits with that. Bearing in mind, when you're setting them, do rotate the crown wheel. I didn't really rotate the crown wheel there, but rotate the crown wheel while you're tightening it up to make sure that the, everything's getting squeezed into the right locations and that the balls are sitting correctly in the cage. I've got my little linnet running about here. I've got a pair of linnets. There's another one there. I've got a pair of linnets that keep coming back. They're very friendly with Betty the Blackbird. She's sitting in the hedge down there. But uh, never mind. So, yes. And that is a very nice way of having a really good starting point for when you come to put a bat together. Put those away like that. That'll stop this from rotating. The wire will stop the adjustment nut from dropping out. All right. That's it for this little video. If you found it useful, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. Tell your mates. The channel is still growing very strongly, thank you very much. And as always, when you come visiting, your time is greatly appreciated by us. So, remember, don't overthink it. It's just nuts and bolts. See you in the next one. Bye now.